So whoever just checked in, uh, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, would you want to help me do a little audio check? Um, just tell me if this is coming through well or if this is way too loud, because um, I can adjust it right now. Brenda, while you're here, uh, will you do a quick audio check for me? Because um, I can change the gain on the new mic system um, and just want to make sure that uh, I'm not either blowing you out or hard to hear. So how does it sound when I do this? All you need are three chords in a song. All you need are three chords in a song. You are more than welcome. Hi, Bill Martz. All right, Brenda says she hears me, so we're going to trust that this, uh, this setup is better. There is a new camera and a new microphone, so things should be a whole lot clearer. Uh, I know that my mug is <laughs> bright and clear in front of me. So we'll give folks a minute or two to just kind of check in and check on here. And then we will get started. If you would like to, uh, feel free to identify yourself. If you'd rather remain anonymous, that is entirely fine. I will tell you that as we go through the service, there will be an opportunity for you to, to type in some prayer requests, and we will get to those. Well, folks, we will honor our time. It is, it is good to see you. I see that there's about seven folks or eight folks right now uh, clicked in and clicked on. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for bearing with us as we offer this opportunity. Wanted to do something midweek in addition to Sunday morning. 
so that folks have a chance to gather even if it is this way. So whoever you are, however you've come, please know that you are most welcome here. The way this service will work tonight, the format of this, is about the first 15 minutes or so. I'm going to offer some formal prayers, a little bit of reflection, maybe a couple of songs. And then the last 15 minutes of this half-hour service, I want to give you all an opportunity to, to lift up in community whatever prayers you would like us to share. Uh, do be aware that this obviously is a live broadcast uh, over the internet in a public setting. Um, so whatever you share uh, is is available for the, for the world to hear. Um, and it will be posted on YouTube. If you don't know, we now have a dedicated YouTube site for the church. So that is First Presbyterian Church in Victor, New York. Uh, uh, if you just look that up on YouTube, you will see that there's a channel for us. And all of these will be posted for that a little bit later. Um, but we do also want to give folks just a chance to, to be in prayer and do those pieces. So thank you for joining in tonight. Um, if you want to check in, you're welcome to do so. But we'll give just a second here. And there we go. So the news continues to be a little bit crazy. Lots of, of energy and chaos and closures and challenges in the world. And sometimes the best thing we can do is nothing, a holy nothing, but nothing. A chance to breathe deep, settle down, hand over to God for at least just a moment the things that we need not hold for this moment. So I would ask as you gather into this space, if there's something really, really pressing on your mind, taking your energy, your attention, your spirit away from you for about a half an hour, Maybe you can place that worry into the hands of the holy. You can give that to God for good safekeeping. I promise a half an hour from now, uh, one of two things will be true. Either it really is a challenge in your life and you can pick it back up again and go to work. Or it was not yours to hold and you can leave it in the hands of the holy. So give yourself the space to be as present as you can be here this evening and it is lovely to have you here this evening. We will start with the first seven verses of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is, a, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. And God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It may feel a lot like the earth is trembling, the waters are roaring and foaming, that the nations are shuddering, and we trust that there is some goodness yet in this moment and that the authority of the holy is more powerful than the anxiety of the day. There was a song I wrote just a little while ago that we thought would be appropriate to share this evening. It's called Peace in Me, and it is in part based on Psalm 46. Though the mountains should tremble And the seas will roar Though the children will battle and fight their wars, there is peace in me when I abide in you. Lord, may it always be. Your peace in me. Whose 
time is gone Though I hear but a whisper What should be a song There is peace in me When I abide in you Lord, may it always be Your peace in me It passes understanding it is a gift of the soul It will not leave you orphaned It will leave you whole This peace in me When I abide in you Lord, may it always be Your peace If light fades to darkness and sorrow comes, it all turns uncertain. May there still be this one peace in me when I abide in you, Lord. May So what do we do in anxious times? How is it that we give of ourselves to the world, be honest about who we are and how we're feeling and what it is we need? What is it we can do in anxious times that is true, that is beautiful, that is worthy? One of the uh, favorite stories that I know comes from after Mother Teresa died and they went and cleaned out her very spare office in Calcutta where she was working in a leper colony with folks who had a disease that scared the world and made folks be isolated. And she stood in that scary space and she loved and she served and she coordinated and she did the best that she could in ways that eventually would lead to her sainthood. One of the few adornments in Mother Teresa's office was a poem. It wasn't written by her, but it was important enough to her that she had it in that space. It was called Anyway. And I took that song and I, I paraphrased it into, or I took that poem and paraphrased it into a song. And I wonder if we can recognize that the good work we can put into the world, even though it feels like it's not enough right now, is still worthy and good work. That we are called to be people of hope and energy and compassion and lightness. That we are called to be people who follow the prayer of St. Francis, but perhaps first follow the song of Mother Teresa. People can be unreasonable, illogical, and cruel. Love them anyway. If you are 
are kind, you may be accused of trying to manipulate, be kind anyway. If you reach the top of the mountain, one may try to bring you down. Reach it anyway. If you are honest and speak the truth, you just might get used. Be honest. Anyway, anyway, it's really about you and God. Anyway, following the light. Anyway, the twilight and the dawn. What you take a lifetime to build, another may come and kill. Build it anyway. Well, the good you do today might be forgotten when tomorrow comes. Do good. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. Anyway, it's really about you. Anyway, the twilight and the dawn are never wrong in their prayer for oh, what is right. Life, love, happiness, and grace. Live them anyway. St. Francis famously said something like this. It's a prayer attributed to him, whether it's a quote from him, may be in question. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. When we take a moment to offer others a moment of peace, 
we wonderfully find ourselves given the opportunity to be at peace. Friends, this is a hard season for us to gather, and yet we choose to do so electronically at the moment, but in spirits always. Thank you for choosing to be in this space. Know that God is your very present help in a season of trouble, that the world shaking is insufficient. It can't destroy grace or goodness. And our task in whatever seasons of challenge we may find ourselves in perhaps may be to love people anyways, to give the best we have anyways, to give those we know and those we don't a certain measure of kindness and hopefulness and peace, and in so doing, find exactly what we're looking for. Amen. Now, we've reached about the halfway mark of our little time together, and I did want to give you all an opportunity to share prayer, to say what it is that we might lift up for one another. A quick reminder, if you have just tuned in, uh, these things are very public as we are broadcasting on the internet and things will be uploaded to YouTube later. Um, so if there's anything particularly sensitive or personal or identifying in a way that you would not prefer to have other people easily access, then uh, couch it a little carefully in your language or perhaps choose to share it a little bit offline. But for now, in this space and time, can I ask, are there things that you would have us pray for and trust that folks on the other end of this will enter into that conversation and, uh, and do so? So I'm going to give you a minute or two to simply type into your comments, um, and I will read those and we will go from there. So while you all are doing that, I will uh, say hi to Karen and Sue and Bruce and Nancy and another Sue. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. And Ken and Susan. There's Wow, we've got every Susan and Victor here. And hello, Donna, you made it. All right, we will begin with an opportunity to be in prayer for one another. Uh, Bruce, Nancy Fisher, asking that we be in prayer for family members who are dealing with serious health issues. We know that there are others who are also doing the same. I can share with you that uh, a younger person in our, our congregational life uh, actually needed to go to the hospital today, and it's a, hard, it's a hard time to have to go to the hospital. We trust that they will be okay, um, and I don't want to name them specifically on, online here, but there are many who are dealing with, with health issues, both preceding the COVID-19 crisis and also now because of it. So, Lord, do hear our prayer as we recognize people are hurting in body, are struggling in spirit, and there are those who are in very serious spaces and their lives are at risk. May they be protected, may they be loved, may medical facilities be adequate and compassionate in their care. Lord, do hear our prayer. I see that uh, Brenda has folks traveling back from Florida and traveling's not real fun right now. Um, so indeed, traveling mercies for her parents and for everybody uh, who may not be home yet and is having to navigate public transport or long travels and all of those delays. Uh, we actually have family friends who are uh, were teaching on a Fulbright uh, in Budapest, Hungary, and they were recalled back to the United States. But in so doing, they need to find a way to get all four of them back here and will likely be facing quarantine upon their return. And so traveling mercies for everybody who's in that space. Lord, do hear our, hear our prayer. 
Bill Martz, uh, praying for doctors, nurses, EMTs, everyone trying to treat the sick. Um, I can tell you that there's a, uh, a sheriff parked out just outside the church right now, just filling out a report. Uh, those first responders who will walk into whatever is before them because someone is in need or in crisis and in so doing have themselves put at a certain measure of risk. We do ask that uh, those who are our first line responders and caretakers for everybody who's in this crisis be protected as well, that, that they may be safe and able to continue their good and holy work. Lord, do hear our prayer. Yes, Karen. Uh, for friends who have found themselves unemployed suddenly. Uh, there are a number of people uh, in that category. The, the unemployment claims have just absolutely skyrocketed, uh, especially for uh, hospitality workers and folks who are hourly working, uh, entertainment issue, restaurants, all those things. There is a huge amount of uh, people in our country and in our local community I think it's something like 60% uh, who are not in salaried positions. And so a shutdown means a loss of income, and a loss of income means a radical increase uh, in, in vulnerability and need. So absolutely, for those who are unemployed and those who are facing uncertainty uh, in this season economically, Lord, do hear our prayer. Brenda asks, for those that are self-isolating, as they might be in the high-risk category. Yes, indeed. Uh, one of the big costs of this may simply be social isolation. Um, we do need some social distancing, um, but actually it should be physical distancing and social proximity. Um, but I can't get the government to change the language. And we're not actually trying to separate ourselves from ourselves in spirit, just some physical space. There are many who are now losing their only connections to, to friends and family and some sense of spirit and joy and purpose in the world. So indeed, we, we pray for those who are self-isolating in this season. Let's see, uh, prayer for truth from our leaders in this time of strife. Yep, we need, we need facts and care. We need uh, brave and compassionate action. We need priorities for the most vulnerable in this, in this world. Uh, and in this country, regardless of, of consequence for, for leadership. Um, and so we would ask that the heart of Christ, the self-sacrificial care for God's most vulnerable children, be at the, at the forefront of all who have an opportunity to serve and make decisions regarding their well-being and care. So indeed, we ask that the Lord might hear our prayer. Yeah, Bill is talking about those who've lost jobs and incomes, indeed. Brenda notes for those who are food insecure, um, and that will that number will go up um, as folks obviously lose their job and then and then need that care. Uh, if you don't know, uh, I've signed our church up to be an emergency food distribution site for the food pantry, um, so there will be some emergency food bags here uh, that I, as the only person in the building, will uh, be able to distribute to people as they come to the door. Um, and we'll go from there. But there's, there's absolutely a need now and a growing one coming soon. So we do pray for those who are food insecure. Lord, hear our prayer. Now's kind of your last chance to type in something if you have it. It's not a competition or a test. Um, but if you wish to, I invite you to do so now. Seeing none, let me close our service this evening uh, with an invitation to the opportunity that is before us. Strangely, we have this opportunity to reprioritize our families. Strangely, we have this opportunity to settle into our own homes with a little bit more time and a little less mobility than we had just a few days ago. That is frustrating and it comes with great consequence for many of us and for much of this world. It also comes with a little bit of an opportunity, a precious gift of paying attention to what matters the most, a precious gift of having a little extra time, 
to pay attention to the quiet, the solitude, the goodness, the possibility of God's presence just in our own spaces. And so I want to close the evening with a poem from Thomas Merton, uh, the, the famous monk who spent some time uh, up in the Abbey of the Genesee, and he offers the words of this song. If you seek a heavenly light, I, solitude, am your professor. I go before you into emptiness, raise strange suns for your new mornings, Open the windows of your innermost apartment. When I, loneliness, give my special signal, follow my silence, follow where I beckon. Fear not, little beast, little spirit. I, solitude, am an angel and have prayed in your name. Look at the empty, wealthy night, the pilgrim moon, I am the appointed hour, the now that cuts time like a blade. I am the unexpected flash beyond yes, beyond no, the forerunner of the very word of God. Follow my ways, and I will lead you to golden-haired suns, logos and music, blameless joys, Innocent of questions and beyond answers, for I, solitude, am thine own self. I, nothingness, am thy all. I, silence, am thy amen. In the nothingness, in the silence, in the extra space, may you find the presence and the comfort of God. In the nothingness, the silence, the extra space, may you find that even as the mountains tremble, there is peace in you. Even as the nations totter, there is peace in you. Even as all things seem uncertain, there is one thing that cannot and will not ever change, and it is simply this. There is nothing in life or in death that can separate you from the love of God through Jesus, who is our Christ. May you know that tonight. Please check in live and in person. Uh, the phone is open. The office is being checked. I am here. And for now, we will say amen. Thank you for coming to a little prayer service. This will happen every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock on this platform, and it will then be uploaded the next day onto our YouTube channel where you can't directly participate, but you are welcome to view. Friends, have a blessed evening. Thank you for checking in, and good night. Ironically, there's a few more eyes coming in. Um, our service this evening is just half an hour long and has actually just come to an end. Um, but I will stick around for a second or two. Uh, if you want to type in, introduce yourself if you have any questions, um, or you can simply call the church uh, and I will get back to you. All right, friends, I am going to click on out of here. Love you, bless you, do take care, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.